Hey team, Luigi Mondelli here. This is the weekly talk number 42. In this episode, I'd like to talk more about mindset for competitors and maybe why you have been underperforming when you are under stress. A lot of what I will mention here comes from our last camps. We have been holding the psychology and education applied to martial arts instruction camps every year. And my sister has been helping me out, Linda. She is a pedagogue and she has been working as a consultant um, it, for our team. Again, this video is for anyone involved in combat sports competitions, specifically a little bit. We are going to talk more in terms of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but also applies to anybody underperforming in force on force scenarios, in combatives, or law enforcement training, or people that have gone through real life scenarios and felt that they could have done better but somehow things in a psychological level happened that kind of held you back so just to start i will um, start mentioning a little bit more about high performance mindset this is what we uh, mentioned in our last camp we may, we use more the term growth mindset and this is not a motivational speech this is not a pre-talk a talk pre-game. This is just how we see. And uh, I oversimplified just uh, for the sake of this video here to help us understand um, one major factor that can be affecting your performance. So how to get a high performance mindset. I'm going to read this briefly here. The mental excellence provided by a high performance mindset needs to be built into the routine of professional sports Combat sports, like I said, force on force, law enforcement training, etc. However, most of these actions happen through self-knowledge and self-criticism. This is going to be the item two of the next slide I will show you guys. And uh, so self-knowledge and self-criticism criticism of the actions carried out, carried out throughout the career or, as you guys are going to see in the next slide, throughout our last event. So it's pretty much career experience, but I'm gonna mention the most recent events and how they can impact and create what we're gonna mention now, limiting belief. One of the first attitudes to achieve a high performance mindset is to identify and suppress your limiting belief. So that's why I put this picture of this man that looks like he's a high performance athlete, but he has a disability. So, um, he ha he's an amputee from the maybe knee down. And the fact that he's an amputee could have created a limiting belief in his mind that he would never be able to be a sprinter or high performance athlete. So I put the picture because it's very obvious. It's a guy that you can see that he's given his all. I'm not a runner, but he seems like he has a very good form or technique here. He's uh, wearing a prosthetics here, and um, I guess like he's giving it his all, regardless of what people could have told him or what he could have told himself. That's why I use that. Now, next slide here, we're going to talk about limiting beliefs and the pressure, pressure in this as desensitization. So... First, I, I separated this in three steps. Number one is identify your limiting beliefs. And this is based on my own observations, my own studies when it comes to psychology, sports psychology, psychology in general. That's my, say, hobby or one of my curiosities in life to understand more our minds. And I'm not a professional. I'm not taking any, um, you know, proper education in any college and etc. But I read a lot of books and I watch a lot of workshops. So one, I categorize as a rooted limiting beliefs. What would it be those? So for instance, I believe that throughout your childhood, your youth, um, you could develop, it could be a something that is self-developed, uh, some limiting beliefs, like um, I'm too small to be a football player, I, um, I'm too heavy, or I'm too tall, I'm just a girl, I'm just, uh, I'm, the smaller in my classroom, kind of things like that, or I'm not really coordinated, things that you will convince yourself. Those thoughts will be installed by yourself, and it's just like 
it could be based on also your personality traits, your experiences, traumas, and etc. But anyway, this is a long, complicated uh, topic that it's not exactly uh, my place to explain. But anyway, another thing, it could be external, right? So during your childhood and your youth, you suffer bullying. It could be even from siblings saying like, hey, look how small you are. Like, look how fat you are. Look like how weak you are. Um, you're never going to be a good athlete. It's kind of things that people will say and maybe unconsciously it will stick. We say like it will stick to your mind. And um, or you could be coaches trying to stimulate you, throwing challenges like, ah, you were never going to be able to to do this or you're never going to be able to do that. Like not as in with a bad intention, but trying to challenge to see if the kid would uh, try to prove that the coach was wrong. Family members can do that. Parents can do that. Um, any little thing maybe can spark some limiting belief. And those would be like, and even from trauma as well. Trauma, it could be trauma that comes from bullying and et cetera. Maybe just somebody that told you like, you're so uncoordinated, you're never going to be an athlete. You're never going to be able to fight. You're never going to be able to be a cop. You're never going to be able to be whatever, a military uh, person or what are, or you? It could be even a physical. Like I wear uh, glasses, right? I wear contact lenses as well. So it could be somebody like, "Oh, you're blind. You are never gonna be a good shooter." <laughs> kind of silly stuff like that. But maybe you carry, you have been carrying on those limiting beliefs for a long time. And then second would be like what we mentioned in the previous one: your recent or last experiences in the positive feedback loop. Not positive as, positive as in good, but as in incremental, meaning you go compete one time, you don't do well, you perform poorly, now you go to the second tournament afraid of repeating the same performance, and then you go to the ter third event, and all you can think is how you lost the other two in the other two events, and you see a competitor that beat you before, and immediately you say like, oh no, this guy or this girl again are not going to win this time. So those could be limiting beliefs based on this feedback loop. So just the incremental pressure that you put in yourself based on your past experiences. And I'm going to tell you how to break this sequence right now. Number one or number two, acknowledge your mistakes and uh, or where you can improve. So acknowledge your mistakes and or because you might, I'll try to break that down, where you can improve. So number one, you're going to assess your last performances. And I would say you have to assess your uh, psychological, um, what happened in a psychological uh, manner. So for instance, if you, did you, ha did you feel like um, shortened breath? Did you um, notice that after you, you kind of had a tunnel vision auditory occlusion your heart rate was like so high you could feel your pulse in your ear you lost dexterity um, you could identify to really feel and see uh, understand how stressed you are you were and how the stress mechanism in your brain sparked all these other physiological effects it could be one right um, what were your thoughts? What did you tell yourself when you saw your opponent? You have to be very honest with yourself. You don't have even to share this with anybody else. But you just should look at yourself from outside as a second person, if that makes sense. And then after that, you should look at skills, techniques, what happened, right? So that's the physical part of the... The event. So you have the psychological part and you have the physical part, if that makes sense. Once you, you see what went wrong uh, with your mind, what you did wrong, maybe like skill-wise, technique-wise, the second step is you should ask the experts, your coaches, your you know teammates with more experience, the subject matter experts, whoever's running a force-on-force -force drill that has the answers and etc. Anyway, in the black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, anybody that you look up to and then somebody that can give you some guidance. Once you obtain the answers, you have to drill, 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 and drill some more. <laughs> so you have to drill those situations over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And then you have to pressurize. And I'm going to go over like how we're going to pressurize 
creating like this stress desensitization inoculation. And pre, this is all pre-tournament. Of course, the more you compete, the more you go through force on force scenarios, the more desensitized you're gonna get. The more you find yourself in the stressful situations that you can uh, be more mindful and control your stress level through maybe breathing exercise and etc. You should, um, you should do better, right? So how are we going to do this stress desensitization or the third step of the second item here, ask a drill pressurize. So how are we going to pressurize? So one going to be modify your training to be comfortable under pressure. So one is a skill pressure, two will be uncomfortable positional pressure, and three going to be the secondary and tertiary, which are going to be more the psychological pressure. Skill pressure, I would mention that for instance, say that you tap to an arm bar, you didn't do the, you watched the video, you didn't uh, do quite the right response, right avoidance and defense. Don't forget to separate avoidance from defense. And now what you can do is you can ask your coach, you can ask your instructor, whoever's running the program to maybe run a scenario where the person from whatever situation your, your teammate is starting from a 70 to 80 percent applied arm bar when you say go you have to get out of the 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 arm bar you have to apply the defense or do the avoidance and etc if your coach is not running that type of training that day what you could do is you could ask your teammates say you know i'm rolling with dave and i say like dave listen i'm having a really hard time defending um, this technique here. Can you start from 70 to 80%? And um, if I defend, we restart. If I, you know, manage to get to a better position, we restart. If you get me, we restart. And then you give me some feedback to see how well I'm doing. And uh, and I'm, first of all, I'm sorry if you can hear Chrome barking, but um, I'm just going to keep going. Anyway, um, so it could be like, well, Somebody passed your guard or somebody uh, managed to disarm you in the force on force. Whatever situation happened, try to get like as far as possible that you still can apply some defense, right? Avoidance and defense and you can make it realistic and just repeat over and over and over. Another thing is in our case, in our school, in our training facility, we do have the competition training. Usually we do, I, when I'm running classes lately, I have been doing even more um, drills starting from a pressurized situation, meaning we're gonna start from this setup here, this technique, and then whatever happens, happens. But you could ask your coach, maybe that's the type of training you have or type of class you have to start attending more often etc. Um, second one is a big one, in my opinion, is uh, to train to be uh, in uncomfortable positional or with uncomf uncomfortable positional pressure, meaning, for instance, um, say that I'm training with Dave. Dave is one big guy that we have in our school that is extremely skilled, extremely strong, extremely good and, um, and heavy. So I could say, Dave, can you start from side control and um, and then just put all the pressure so I can feel more comfortable. So that could be one way. Uh, somebody starting from the mount position, somebody starting attacking your back, somebody starting already isolating your weapon if you're doing force on force, uh, somebody already pinning you against the wall and making it as uncomfortable as possible where if you don't, you feel like you have to, you're going to have to control your anxiety, you have to control your stress, you're going to have to find the right proper breathing for that situation and you have to work on those things so you can feel comfortable in uncomfortable positions and the third one will be more the psychological effect so in the jiu-jitsu terms we could do this like secondary and tertiary secondary going to be like this you are concerned about the audience so you have a lot of people watching you right um and that you feel like well I can always perform really well in the gym. I don't have any problems with the techniques, but when I feel there are like a lot of people watching me, when it's a, like a live situation, when there is like a test or assessment, if it's a force on force, I kind of like feel the pressure. So what we can do in training is simulate a tournament. We can get 
30 people, say that we have 30 people in the room, we separate into teams, we do that sometimes. Uh, we should do more often in the school. We separate the class in two teams. You have two team leaders, and then you have only uh, two people fighting in front of the whole class while your teammates are cheering for you, the other side of the school, uh, the, the, the team is cheering and rooting for, the, for your opponent, your teammates, but there's some pressure there. We can do um, um, internal tournaments, um, we can put cameras, we can put a super loud noise, um, you know, music, so you feel overwhelmed, kind of things like that. Tertiary is a little bit harder. I, I put the tertiary as like the third order of effects. Like, well, you got a $2,000 sponsorship from your local uh, business friend to pay for your travel expenses to Vegas to compete in the Worlds or Pan American Championship, or whatever. Now you're thinking like, what are I going to tell to my sponsor? So um, the answer is... Your sponsor is supporting you regardless. Um, of course, if you win, it's more exposure. But most of the sponsors are not even looking for that exposure. They're doing that because they, they like you or they want to help you out or they like sports. So um, secondary also could be, and tertiary could also be, well, I, I want to make my teammates happy. I want to, you know, make everybody proud. I want to be my, I want my coach to be proud of me. Kind of things like that, but those should not should never be um, things that should put pressure on you. So, just repeating here: identify your limiting beliefs, either the rooted, long time, or the based on the most recent. If you feel like this is like a snowball, every time you go compete, you feel more pressure. You should not do that. You should not feel the pressure. The reason uh, you should not carry over to your current event your experience from your past event as far as like the negative pressure the way that you address uh your your past not so good performances is by doing the second uh step here acknowledge your mistakes and where you can improve if you know if that's the case so assess your last performance psych psychologically speaking physically speaking or like you know skills wise Ask the, the experts, drill as much as you can, and then pressurize. When you pressurize, it might help you with the stress desensitization. Modify your training, be comfortable under pressure. Work your skill pressure, um, being in uncomfortable uh, positions, right? So that's why I call uncomfortable positional pressure. And um, maybe ask your coach if we can do anything as far as like creating a psychological pressure by having people watching you, cameras recording you, if it's force on force, some sort of evaluation, uh, things that we can do just to simulate the pressure. Of course, we can never do 100%. So I hope that helps you guys. If you would like me to develop more about it, we have another, um, we extended more information in our past uh, meeting. We, uh, we talk about how to work on your preparedness, how to engage in breathing techniques, um, how to unhook yourself from limiting beliefs, I'm reading here, and how to maybe um, increment your visualization and mindfulness. So if you have any interest of me developing more of these uh, topics here, just write here in the comments below. Subscribe. Uh, like this so that helps the algorithm here on YouTube because I think this is beneficial to anybody from any team. Another thing is uh, we might have a lot of people in our association throughout the country um, that might not have found this uh, YouTube channel. And again, guys, this is all for you guys. I don't monetize. I don't have that many followers. This is pretty much for the team or anybody that's passionate about training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, combat sports in general, force on force combatives, etc. So send me a comment. You can send me an email to Luigi at americantopteamct.com and I will be more than happy to record whatever you guys ask me to. Thank you.